By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Staples Tournament right here on Timmy Talks. This is episode two. We are entering the top 16. And maybe you're wondering, what is Staples old school? Well, it's quite simple. It's a format with a big ban list because you want to ban the usual suspects, the lightning bolts, of course, the power nine, the restricted cards, but also the swords to plowshares, the Sarah angels of this world. There's nothing wrong with those cards. They're beautiful, but sometimes you want to play with the other 95% of the card pool. And that is what this tournament is for. Now, this format was actually designed by the Hanseatic old school crew of Hamburg. So a shout out to you guys. You can find them on Facebook and I've, uh, I've put a link in the description below to their group. So if you're interested in the Hanseatic crew, check out uh, that Facebook link. I believe they also organize tournaments. So if you're in the Hamburg region, that could be a cool, uh, cool group to hang out with. And uh, today in the top 16, we've got quite an exciting match. Uh, we've got David who's playing with a deck called Big Brain Energy. It's really cool. It's got Eurekas. It gets huge creatures. It's, it's pretty awesome, but more about that in the deck deck section of the video. And he is taking on Fahrenheit, and Fahrenheit is playing a black deck called Kiss Your Ashes Goodbye. And this black deck actually also has a lot of art, well, a lot, some artifacts in them. But I'm um, all about that, of course, in the deck deck section. Now, before I jump into the deck deck section, first a message from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are ready to dive into the deck decks. We're going to start with the deck of the player on the left and that is David and his deck is called Big Brain Energy. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of David, a big brain energy. And I mean, look at that deck. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, four forces of nature, four Colossus of Sardia, two of those big dragons. What is that? The Masmadi? I, I forgot the name, but it's 8-8 flying dragon. I mean, this is really cool. And of course, this entire deck revolves around that play set there in the middle, Eureka, right? Eureka, two green and two to cast for a sorcery. That reads, starting with you, each player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. Repeat this process until no one puts a card onto the battlefield. So repeat this process until no one decides to put a card on the battlefield. That means you put something down and if your opponent says no thank you, you can continue going on until you no longer want to put anything onto the battlefield. And that's just fantastic. And in this deck, we also see four install energies. And I think they're quite good. It's just one green. Uh, for this enchant creature and what it does it it allows you to untap your creature one more time but it also gives your creature haste so you can attack with your creature the moment uh, you you play this so if you have a colossus of sardia that you can play out with your eureka you can then put the instal energy on it and you can attack this very same turn so i think instal energy is really important in this deck and then we see another play set of cards i find really really cool that's exida and Exida is basically a cheap book, right? The Gem de Tome is four to cast, four in tap to draw a card. An artifact we all know. Exida is only three to cast and three in tap and you draw a card. The problem, of course, is you do need the right mana, green, red, and black, right? Those are the mana you need. We also see Lay Druids in here. I have to say, I'm really liking this deck. And this is also one of the reasons why I'm really a fan of this stapleless format, or I actually should say these type of formats, because I mean, look at this deck. Isn't it a beauty? Look at these cards. And this is a deck that made it into the top 16. So in a field of almost 50 players, this is one of the top uh, top decks, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive by itself, isn't it? Anyway, this is uh, the deck of David. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Ryan with a very funny name, Kiss Your Ashes Goodbye. There are two of those in here, by the way, Ashes to Ashes. Maybe kind of uh, focus on that card. It's a card from the dark, two black and one to cast for a sorcery that reads, exile two target non-artifact creatures 
and Ashes to Ashes deals five damage to you. So what happens sometimes with this card is you cannot play it later in the game because you don't have enough life anymore. But I think with this deck, that shouldn't be a problem because we've got four drain lives. Drain life, of course, is sorcery, one black and one. And for each black you pay additionally to the casting cost, you can deal one damage to any target and you also gain one life for that target. So it's a really good card. And again, it's got that life gain, so that makes your Ashes to Ashes better. Talking about cards that need life gain, we also see two Greeds in here. Greed and Enchantment from Legends, uh, from the Dark, uh, sorry, from Black, of course, one Black and three to cast, I believe. Yeah, it's three, not two, I think. And you pay one Black, then you gotta pay two life and you get to draw a card. So again, if you wanna um, you know, pay life, you also need to gain some life. So we see those four drain lives. We also see two siphon souls. And as I mentioned before, we also see a place of Onulets. Now, Onulet is, is, is a really funny creature. I sometimes I think maybe I underestimate Onulet because I never play with it. It's a two, two for three. But when it dies, you gain two life, which is kind of nice. And he's also playing it here in combination with uh, Fallen Angel. And Fallen Angel is a 3-3. It's kind of the black Atok, but instead of sacrificing art uh, artifacts to it, you can sacrifice creatures to it, and it gets plus two, plus one every time you do it. So if you second only let you gain two life, and your uh, Fallen Angel becomes a 5-4. Uh, a so that's pretty good with flying. So that's quite nice. Um, we also see four Brassmen here. I think the Brassmen can be quite good early game. Just uh, one, to, one to cast for this 1-3 uh, creature. We also see Deserts. So I think this deck is really good against like quick aggressive decks like White Weenie, for example, also because of the Kumbaj Witches. I think this deck is not really great in this matchup. I'm afraid for that, Ryan, because remember the Eureka deck, it's gonna drop really big creatures really, really fast. And that's definitely gonna be a challenge here for Ryan. He doesn't have a lot of like, he doesn't have like a Swords to Plowshares or Disenchant answer to those big uh, creatures like uh, Force of Nature or Gloss of Sardia. So that could be difficult. Of course, he's going really fast, but he also has no way to counter, um, you know, any of the Eurekas that uh, David may, may cast. I think a card that could be very important here, if he finds it, um, is going to be Force Field. Force Field is this artifact um, uh, from Alpha, from the core set, and you pay three for this. And then uh, what it does is you can pay one every time an unblocked creature is dealing damage to you, and then that damage is prevented all but one point of damage. So if, if, if he attacks with the uh, force of nature, you can decide I'm not going to block. I'm going to take eight, but I'm going to use my force field to reduce that eight to just one single point of damage. So I can see force field being really, really good in this matchup. But look at the list. He's only got one. So it's, it looks like an interesting brew. But it, I also think in this matchup, it's probably going to be really tough for Ryan because... If, you know, if David gets an early Eureka out, I really, really don't see a way for him to win it. Now, if David cannot find Eureka, then David is in, in trouble because I do see this deck being quite aggressive and it can go quite fast. Like early game, you play your 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 Brass Man, you maybe play your Black Knight, your Kumbach Witches, then into an Onulet, then you go for your Bok Rafe, you go for your Fallen Angel, and, you know, you kind of keep dealing points of damage and then when he's I don't know low enough you can finish it off with like a drain life or with your uh, uh your rocket launcher so I can I can see options there maybe even your siphon soul to kind of get you know deal damage for those last two points of damage so I think I think if he can have a quick start and David cannot find Eureka then he can be in a really good position but like I said I think I think David for me is the favorite in his matchup because of the Eureka and the big creatures and because you know, Ryan doesn't have a lot of like spot on removal. I mean, how much black mana do you need if you want to drain life away a force of nature or uh, a Colossal Sardia? And remember, Colossal Sardia cannot be targeted by the Ashes to Ashes. That's not a problem because Ashes to Ashes only works on non artifact creatures. So it's going to be a challenge. Is it impossible? Of course not. This is magic, but it's going to be a challenge. Anyway, we've looked at the deck of, of Ryan here. Kiss your ashes goodbye. Again, I love the title. And we've looked at the deck of uh, David. Also a cool title, Big Brain Energy. And that means only one thing. We are ready to go to the top 16 match of Timmy's Stapleless Mess. Here we go. Game number one here is about to begin. Ryan on the play. He's playing Mono Black, starting here with a Brass Man, a 1-3 creature from Arabian Nights, passing the turn to David. So David is playing Eureka. He's playing a three-color deck, green, black, and red, starting here with uh, a Wild Growth. And I think this whole 
game, this whole match is going to be about can David find the Eureka before he dies? So, and of course, can Ryan put pressure on? But looking at his list, he's very consistent exactly having the Kumbach, which is here on two. He also plays with a full play set of Black Knights. He will see the attack by the Brass Man. So David probably going to drop to 19. Doesn't have too much to worry about yet, but I mean, this thing could get out of hand quickly. So David untapping here. Let's see what he can do. He also plays with Lay Druids in his deck, so could play that out now if he has it, of course. For now, just playing a second Bayou. The dual land can tap for green and black. Just passing the turn. So this is good news for Ryan. Ryan paying one here because you need to pay one to untap the Brass Man. So investing a mana, I wonder if he can find a second black and if he has another creature in hand that he can cast. Probably gonna attack first. Exactly, I'm gonna put both creatures into the red zone. Attacking for two. So David dropping to 17. Can Ryan play out another creature? Tapping two, two black. Oh, there's a black knight. Yeah, and this is the problem, right? This deck can go so fast, it's so consistent, but this is the turn it's all about for David. Can he find a land? And can he then cast Eureka? Those are the two questions here. Okay, land has been found. So he's got the four mana he needs. But just passing the turn, he's putting his cards away. This is really good news for Ryan. Is he going to untap the Brass Man or not? If not, it probably means he's got or a three drop or four drop in hand. There's the Swamp. First gonna attack probably, attacking for three. David will drop to 14 unless he's got something. He is playing with, for example, a Darkness in the deck, a one-off. Taking the damage, gonna drop to 14. Ryan tapping four. Are we gonna see a Bark Wreath? That would be really good on this board. Yep, there it is, the 3-3 three, three Swamp Walker. Another problem for David. Remember Swamp Walk, David has a Swamp and two Bayou. So it's gonna be really tough for him to, uh, to block this creature, gonna draw for turn. And um, looking at the mana base here of David, he's missing a color. Remember, he's also playing with red. Doesn't have a red mana yet. Oh, Diamond Valley, that is tough. This is not the card that David wants to see right now. Passing the turn back to Ryan. And I mean, Ryan got, has got how much damage? Seven points of damage there on the board. Is he going to untap the Brass Man? Yes, he is. Remember, you've got to make this decision in your upkeep before you draw. So that's pretty important, of course. So you don't have that, that information. Now he's going to attack here. Two points of damage, four points, seven points of damage. David dropping to seven. Oh, this is not good. If he can find Eureka next turn, because he also has the Diamond Valley, he could come back. Look at this. Ryan putting even more pressure on the board. David, he needs like a Eureka and then a couple of big creatures. And he then probably has to sack one after blocks are declared to the Diamond Valley. So needs a Eureka. Nope, cannot find it. Scooping up the card. So game number one going to Ryan. And we are going to let these players sideboard and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So David here, one game behind, does mean that he's on the play. The big question is, is he gonna find that Eureka? Oh, look at this, taking a mulligan, that hurts. Starting with six and being on the play, meaning you only have got five cards left after you play out your land. Then you're passing to Ryan who's on the draw, so he's starting with eight. So it's a bit of a drawback for him, but good news for David, there's no one drop by Ryan. I think David definitely needs more time with his deck. And his plan A is, of course, to cast it Eureka as quickly as he can. Another line, of course, is uh, trying to ramp up and that way kind of hard cast your Force of Nature or your Colossus of Sardia. He will see a Black Knight, by the way, by Ryan, turn two. Hey, there's Exeda. So Exeda is going to help you dig. It's a legendary creature from Legends. Uh, one black, one green, one red for a 1-2 flying creature. And you can tap it and pay a, a black, a red, and a green. And then you can draw a card. So it's quite nice. I've uh, used it as a commander in old school commander. It's pretty cool. There's the attack here with the Black Knight. Probably just going to take the damage. Dropping to 18. Ooh, another Black Knight. So Ryan really putting some pressure on. Basically doing what he did in, uh, in game one as well. And I guess that's what the deck of Ryan can really do. There is a Badlands. Is he going to use Ixir to draw a card? That's exactly what he does. So really kind of probably fishing for Eureka, or if he has a Eureka in hand, but missing, for example, the big creatures fishing for that. We don't know. But uh, anyway, there's a pass here by David, so no Wild Grove, for example. 
Let's see if Ryan can play out more creatures. He can first, of course, attack for four, put David on 14. And I mean, for David, this is all or nothing, right? Fighting for his tournament life. Both players here in the top 16. The winner will advance to the top eight, to the quarterfinals. There's the attack for four. And I mean, it's a pretty big deal if you can make it into the quarterfinals. I mean, this is a tournament where we started with 47 players. So making it to, uh, to a top eight is quite an achievement. Here's the attack for four. So that means David is probably going to drop to 14 here. He is playing with a single darkness in his deck, a card from Legends, kind of a fog, the black fog. But if you have it in hand, I probably wouldn't play it out right now. Ooh, there we see a Drain Life. So remember, Ryan's playing with a full playset of Drain Life, so I'm not surprised that he's finding one. Playing a Drain Life on Exceda, I think it's a good move. You don't want to give David the opportunity to find the bits and pieces he needs for his Eureka, because then you're in trouble. The big question is again, just like in game one, does David have the Eureka? Can he cast his big creatures, Colossus of Sardia, Forces of Nature, Victus Asmadi? For now, it's just a forest, nothing scary coming out, tapping three again, another Xida. So Xida number two hitting the board. The problem for David though is this is very slow. Like you're gonna take an extra four damage then next turn. If the Xira lives, you get to draw one card. You gotta tap the Xira, gonna take more damage next turn. It's just too slow here against Ryan, I think. Ryan attacking for four. David dropping to 10. It's not looking good for him. Needs to win this already a game behind. Let's see what Ryan can do. Can he put more pressure on the board? Oh, another drain life. Draining away the other Xeer, he's going to go up to 24, playing out of Diamond Valley. Two cards in hand, no, three cards in hand. Passing the turn back here to David. David's life is now halved. He needs to do something this turn. Needs to do more than just play out another Xera. Action needs to happen here for David. If he can find another land, maybe then he can hard cast the Force of Nature. Because that's also six to cast. Sorting his mana. Ooh, is he gonna tap that four on the left? Does that mean a Eureka? Are we gonna see the signature card of David's deck? Yep, big brain energy, dude. Big brain stuff. Eureka hitting the board. Card from Legend, Sorcery. What this means is that starting with David, each player can play out a permanent from his or her hand until they both decide not to. So there's a land by David pass to Ryan. Let's see what Ryan has in hand. Only three cards, of course. There's a greed. There's another land from David. Ryan playing out a blight here. Let's see what card he's going to target, what land he's going to target. That Batlands there, it seems, on the right with the uh, chip on it. Oh, look at this. Vivictus Asmadi. 8-8 eight, eight flying Elder Dragon. This is huge. And this could be the turnaround for David. And remember the Asmadi, you can also give it plus one, plus O oh, by tapping a green, a black, or a red mana. So it's kind of a super Shivan dragon. Big problem for Ryan here. Of course, it's his turn, drawing an extra card with the greed. So taking two points of damage, going to 22. But this is a huge problem for Ryan. And remember, it's really tough for him to get rid of an 8-8. I mean, his removal or is like drain life. I mean, he does have ashes to ashes. Oh, Bok Wreath. This can make the difference. It's a 3-3 Swamp Walker, so it cannot be blocked here by uh, David. Ryan, you're drawing another card with the greed, finding a desert, dropping to 20 now. I wonder if he wants to attack with both the Black Knights. One of the things he could do if he decides to attack, it looks like he is, then David's probably going to block one of them. Then in response, after blocks are declared before damage is dealt, he could sack a Black Knight to the Diamond Valley, gain two more life, which basically is a card because you've got greed. And then you deal two damage to David, putting him on a uh, three-turn clock because of the Bok Wreath that you have with Swamp Walk, if you can still follow me, because then David would drop to eight and uh, the Wraith is a 3-3, three, three, so you need three turns then to kill David instead of four turns. Anyway, he is deciding not to attack, though. David, of course, has to pay the upkeep cost here to keep the Asmadi around. So he has to pay a green, a black, and a red. Kind of uh, figuring out what mana he wants to use. Drawing a card for turn. Ooh, is that, was that a Pyrotechnics? 
card from Legends. Five to cast, so he can cast it. Doesn't mean, of course, that his Badland is going to be destroyed because it's got that Blight on it, but who cares? I mean, this would be a pretty big deal. I think if it's a Pyrotechnics, he could take out both Black Knights and then he can consider, well, consider, then he's going to probably swing in with the Vivictus uh, Asmadi. So let's see, what is he going to do? Who he is going to attack? Be the reason that he's attacking has to mean that there's something useful in that hand or else he wouldn't attack. So eight points of damage here for Ryan. He's going to drop to 13. Wow. Then he's going to tap five second main, I guess. Oh, there's a pyrotechnics. So with pyrotechnics, you can deal four damage and you can divide those points of damage any way you want to. So he's probably going to deal two to the Black Knight and two to the other Black Knight. In response, we see Ryan here gobbling up one of the knights, going to go back up to 15. But uh, that's still a two-turn clock with the Osmani on board. So all of a sudden, Ryan is with his back against the wall here in game number two. But doesn't need much to change things, I feel. Like a drain life could be quite good here as well. He's going to attack here with the Wraith first. So that would mean David would drop to seven. I really wonder what's in that hand. And is Ryan now maybe considering using the Greed? I wonder... I mean, if we look at the mana that David has available after paying the upkeep cost, he can swing in for 12 at a time. So Ryan could go to 13 and still be on a two-turn clock. And of course, he's got the Diamond Valley. First putting the Blight away, yeah, because that uh, should go. Because the land was destroyed the previous turn when David played out the uh, Pyrotechnics. Two cards in hand, another Swamp. Ooh, he's going to pay the two. He's going to go to the 13, I believe. Yeah, drop it to 13, drawing a card with the Greed. How greedy are you, Ryan? I mean, cannot afford, I think, to, to use it a second time. But maybe he's greedy. Who knows? He's on 13 now. Understandable that he's in the tank here trying to think, what are my options? How low can I go? Oh, two cards in hand. I mean, it was looking great for Ryan until that Eureka got cast and the uh, Favictus came on the board. And of course, that Pyrotechnics top deck from David was brilliant. Brilliant for David, that is, not for Ryan. So Ryan, two cards in hand on 13, David on 7. Look at that, passing the turn. Really good news for David. David, of course, paying the uh, upkeep cost for the Asmati. And now what are we going to see? Now remember, I believe I said the Asmadi is an 8-8, eight, eight, but it's actually a 7-7. Seven, seven. So that does make a difference. There's a Wild Growth. Okay, so he can now pump it up to 11, I believe. He is going to pump it up to 11. That would mean that he's going to go to 2, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's going to drop to 2. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Ryan, Ryan, you need something right now. I mean, you can attack, put him on four, sack the Diamond Valley, go to five, then you can use your greed two, two times more to find a solution. Look at that, that's exactly what he does. Sacking the Wraith, gonna go up to five. Paying two, going to three. Can he find something? I mean, a force field would be really, really good. I mean, not perfect, because it means he still dies, but at least not that quick. Oh, there's another draw. Going to go to one, the last chance of Ryan. Can he find an answer? Nope, that's it. David winning game number two, 1-1. One, one. Oh, boy. And how cool is it to see Vivictus Asmadi, the elder uh, legend, dragon, whatever, you know, being, being important here on the board. That is so awesome. That's why I love this staple is format and uh, david winning here it's 1-1 that means we're going to go to an all decisive game number three game number three here we go so ryan on the play after losing that second game taking a mulligan that is not great for him 
Starting with just uh, six cards in hand, playing a land and then into the Brassman. That's a pretty good start. We've seen uh, Ryan uh, Ryan's strategy work really well in game one. And game two, he came very close. I mean, he just needs to keep playing out creatures and hurting David as quickly as he possibly can. Attacking here for one. Going to put David on 19. Passing the turn. No turn two play for Ryan. This could be key. No Black Knight, no Kumbach Witches. Let's see what David can do. Finding a uh, Whirling Dervish. This is a card that uh, came in from the sideboard. It's a 1-1, one, one, originally from Legends. Protection from Black. And whenever it deals damage to an opponent, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. So, of course, the Brassman is a great blocker here for the Dervish. There's a Desert on the side of Ryan. And just passing the turn. And that makes sense because... Desert is probably not gonna gonna work on the Dervish because with Desert you can deal one damage to an attacking creature after it has dealt damage. And when the Dervish has dealt damage, it's gonna get that plus one plus one counter. Here we see the Exedra hitting the board. We saw that in game two as well. So that can help David draw some cards and try to find the things he needs for his deck to work. First, let's see what Ryan can do playing another Swamp. I mean, the Bok, uh, Bok Wreath would be quite good for him here. Tapping four. There it is, the 3-3 Swamp Walker. I mean, this has been such a nuisance for, for David. Again, it's unblockable because of that Bayou. So, I mean, David probably not happy with this. I mean, he is still on 19. Can he find land number four? That's the first question. And then the next question is, does he have Eureka? Is it worth it to cast Eureka? I guess he doesn't. Putting those three lands separate maybe to use the Exira. To draw an extra card. First passing the turn here back to Ryan. Of course he can use that ability uh, in the in Ryan's turn as well. For example on his end step. So Ryan playing out another swamp here. It's going to attack for three. Going to put David on 16. Does he have a follow up play? A Drain Life would be quite nice here as well. Yep, there's the Drain Life again on Exida. Of course, in response, David can use it one more time. That's exactly what he does. But he is going to lose Exida 2 life as well for Ryan here. He will go back. Uh, he will go up to 22. I wanted to say back up, but he hasn't lost any damage. So 22 life here for Ryan and uh, two cards in hand, it seems. David taking on his turn. Okay, there's another duel. So, I mean, next turn, if you can find another land, you can hard cast a force of nature. Ooh, tapping four. Is it Eureka time? Is it Eureka time? That's a question. It's Eureka time. So Eureka again hitting the board. We saw this in game two and David won game two after that Eureka. Starting with the City of Brass, passing turn to Ryan. It's now his turn to play out a permanent. Okay, there's a rocket launcher. Not going to do much. Can, of course, kill the Dervish. Another Dervish. Ugh. There's an Onulet. Maybe David doesn't have a big creature. But then again, then why would he play out the Eureka? Okay, there's the Tree Folk from the Dark. 4-4. Four, four. Oh, Colossus of Sardia also hitting the board with an Instal Energy. Oh, oh. oh, no. This is so bad for Ryan, but so great to see. Instal Energy, Colossus of Sardia is active and now he can attack for a nine because of that install energy and remember with install energy you can also untap it an extra an extra time so install energy colossal sardia just an amazing combo so he's going to swing in for nine here maybe ryan kind of asking okay what's going on what do these cards do maybe looking up install energy a lot of people forget that install energy uh, allows you to attack uh, with the creature, the turn it comes into play. As though it has haste. Because it doesn't have haste. Because you cannot use the ability of a creature. But you can attack as though it has haste. That's the uh, official errata of the card. Which is pretty insane. So David attacking here. Oh, this is bad news for Ryan. And remember, Colossus has trample. So, I mean, blocking it is not going to be that great. You could consider blocking it on your, your Brass Man. But... I probably wouldn't here. Just first take the damage. Maybe next turn you got to start thinking of blocking the creature. And I mean, of course, it's understandable that Ryan wants to wants to check what's on the card. He wants to make sure that uh, 
that everything is, is played correctly. I mean, remember, this is the top 16 match. The winner will advance to the top eight here of the uh, Staples tournament. Taking the damage, and I'm going to drop to 13. Oh, my, man. That is rough. I am a little surprised that David is not untapping it with the install energy. He could do that as well, I believe. There's the attack with the 3 3 Swamp Walker. So David dropping to 13. But now, just like in game two, all of a sudden after Eureka, things have completely changed. Now it's David in the driver's seat. And also that 4 uh, 4 four Tree Folk that he has, you can. Uh, Pay two black and give it swamp walk. That means you have to pay two life as well when you want to when you do that. So you would drop to eleven, but that's an option. I think I think you should do that here because then you can kill Ryan and force him to block the Colossus. Question is, does he want to go to eleven? I guess not. Really values his life. Ooh, attacking with everything. You're just not giving it Swamp Walk. You can do that as well, of course. That's another line of play. This is really tough for Ryan because if he decides... You, you know, obviously you want to block both of the Dervishes. But you can't because then you take 13 points of damage. So, I mean, he could use the Rocket Launcher here to kill both of the Dervishes. Then he can block the Tree Folk, maybe, on the 2-2 Onu that also gains some life. That could be a line. Another, yeah, another thing he can do. I mean, this is really tough. It looks like Ryan is saying, you've got this. I'm a little, I think he could have stretched it one more turn, I think, right? Anyway, Ryan here picking up the cards. David winning it here. Wow, and what a nice, what a fun match to watch. And I have to say, David, David I really love Eureka decks. I was playing Eureka myself in this tournament. It's just so much fun. And, to see you playing it with the install energy that's just that's great colossal sardia install energy that's a classic combination i love it very good combo and uh yeah this was it this was the match for today so uh the top 16 match of the staples tournament now if you enjoyed this event make sure to come back uh, next week because then uh, i will have more action for you we're going to dive into the quarterfinals of the staples tournament so if you don't want to miss that make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell and now that that's out of the way, there's another thing you can do uh, to support the show. And that is, of course, leaving a like, leaving a comment and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also decide to become a patron of the show, uh, just like Ryan and, uh, and David, by the way. And if you become a patron of the show, there are some really nice perks. First of all, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. And if you become a tier two supporter, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. And of course... You can also join in on the online tournaments like this one when you become a member of the patron program and you are supporting me making this content for you. So what more can you ask for? Please check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can also become a patron of the show. And uh, talking about patrons, let's go to the end scroll and take a look at our fantastic, wonderful patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do? Somebody can see.